Hi, I'm Sherry, this is Lana, and this is Real Estate Tips with SNL. So I heard, and I know you are the queen, queen of new construction. Let me just adjust my okay, crown. There you go. Um, okay. Yeah. And let me just tell you why we all W queen is because you handle new construction like it it's so easy. And yet, even for me, I'm still struggling with it. So I'm hoping you're going to give us some tips to help us all out because it is not easy. No. So how no. did you get so good at this? Well, first, I thought you were going to say, because you never stop talking about new construction. <laughs> Everywhere we are, you know, oh, do you have a buyer for this? Do you have a buyer for this? <laughs> Got it. Yeah, but uh, no, it all started because I built a house. Oh. You know, mm. I built a house. Um, yeah, so that was, I, I started as the buyer. And, um, and certainly in real estate, you know, you and I have helped other buyers with new construction before. I just had the good fortune of, the builder that built my house, um, hiring me after the transaction, you know, a little, and then eventually. Wait, full fudge. how did he hire you? So, <laughs> <laughs> I think I did a great design. I, yeah, I don't know. I had I had some really creative ideas. That's awesome. And um, and I remember I I didn't want the the standard kitchen. I didn't right. want it in in what he had on his plans. And I wanted to put it in a different location. Now, my first idea, um, they they quickly nixed for me. You know, they said, yeah, that construction-wise, that didn't work, mm -hmm. you know. So I just kept coming up with other ideas and taking White out to their plans and just trying to change things. And, you know. Well, you're stressing me out because let me tell <laughs> you why. Most of my clients will mm -hmm. say, well, well, I don't know what I want to build. And look at you designing on your first designed house, right? So you're yes. designing this. How do you get, how do you even start with someone and say, well, um, cause I can see plans, right? You, you know, yes. we throw plans at people. This is the plan of the house, but how do you, how do you get that visual into the consumer so that they feel comfortable of what they're designing? Like, how does that happen? Like, where does it come from? You know, visualizing is probably the, the most challenging part of it, yes. you know, and, and I've, I've always tell, you know, buyers that are coming through, you know, an open house that, you know, there, there are two things that are in your way. Okay. Um, number one is your imagination, you know, and number two is your budget, you know? So, so why is your imagination in your way? Well, I mean, I guess it would depend on the, the consumer, mm -hmm. you know, um, if you, if, if we present to you a model, so right now we do have a model that I can show. I don't always have a model and, and that helps with visualizing. So space, size, right. Got right. it. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. And even going through as we're, you know, walking through the model, mm -hmm. I can bring up different ideas on how you can change things, um, you know, make modifications, customize, you know, even like taking a wall down, extending a room, doing those sort of things. D does the builder like that when Sherry says, <laughs> oh, by the way, I told the consumer we can take this down. Do, do they even mind? Well, he hasn't shut me up. Yet. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. No, no. I, he I'd probably like rolls his eyeballs. Here we go again. We got a change of plans. Well, you know, I have to tell you that this has been a learning curve for me as well, getting into the selling side of new construction, oh, right. yeah. you know, because it is very different than selling an existing home. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I had some growing pains through it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and fortunately, um, you know, this, this builder was great at just kind of guiding me through it and letting me adjust to, you know, his style and, um, he has corrected me when I've, <laughs> when I've messed up and, uh, and I'm not going to lie. I've, I've messed up. So, mm. um, but, but now I feel like we've just been, you know, working together now for five years and, um, and we know, we know how to feed off of each other. Just, you know, I would say like you and I, you know, <laughs> okay. well, that's true, right? Yeah. Because he knows what you're going to bring. And if you bring it a certain way, he knows actually how to come back to you and say, no, <laughs> He has no problem telling me no. <laughs> All right. So take me through the scenario. I'm bringing my buyer mm -hmm. into your, now you have a model. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, um, 
you would what talk about some of the things that are there you talk about what is going to be included mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. you go through what they call specs right 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 um so a builder would actually have plans that a buyer can choose from right yes okay so when do you ever get somebody that says well i like this plan like this is the plan i like yep. so then how do how do you go about with that you just you see if it can work and mm-hmm. and whatnot, right? And you still have to go step by step with the buyer so that they can make a decision on whether this is going to work or not or whether right. they're going to use one of yours. Right. Well, so I appreciate that you bring it up because you actually brought me a buyer who oh, yeah. had their own plans. That's right. You know, and it and it is not uncommon for people to do that. Mm. Um, you know, they see stuff in magazines or online. Sure. And um, and those are not always exact, right? you know, and, and we need to adjust for the lot, um, right. the materials for sometimes these are national plans that really wouldn't work in, you know, our, our new England oh, yeah. climate. So, you know, hmm. some of them don't have basements, you know, we are a basement you know, area, but, uh, but one of the plans that you brought with your buyers, mm-hmm. um, is one that's become pretty popular. Uh, so what my, what my builder did is, you know, took the plans, you know, made some adjustments with the meeting with your client or right. whomever the consumer is. Right. Um, Cause we're really trying to fit within a budget, you yeah. know? So sometimes these plans look like they're going to be amazing, but when you add in all the costs, it doesn't work. So right. what can we, what can we tweak? Right. And once we found out where we needed to be, then he's taking it to his architect and having actual plans that, you know, can be built from. And that's become something in our portfolio that we can use for other buyers. Look at me bringing you did. Plan. I love the plan that you brought. <laughs> that was wonderful, and your clients were amazing. Uh, oh, that's great, you right? Know? Because talk to me about what you, who the buyer is. Have you seen like you know really seasoned people that you know? Um, I've built five homes. I know you know about it. I mean, who who buys new construction right now? Like, what's happening? I think that's a great question. So. I think that we often look at as new, new construction as being expensive, you know, yeah. and, um, mm-hmm. you know, and in some ways I, that initial price might be, mm-hmm. you know, but it also, you got land too, right? Right. So, right. You're, you're right. getting, a, I mean, the whole finished product, right. you know, this is not a, the, what I'm selling is a finished product, right? It is not a situation where a buyer is taking out a construction loan, you know, right. this is buying a, a home once it's been completed. Okay. But, um, but in the long run, you know, that house may actually be more affordable because, you know, you're not worrying about replacing a roof and heating systems and windows and all these big ticket items that you might have on an existing home. So it has traditionally been something that the move up buyer has been doing. However, Mm. I've been seeing an increase in first time home buyers doing new construction. And, and mm. I, I, I mean, my theory, yeah. I don't know if you yeah, know, yeah. I, I have nothing to back this up yeah. other than perhaps my own children. <laughs> but I think that a lot of the, I think a lot of, um, of our children today uh, are staying home with mom and dad yeah. a bit longer, yeah, sure. you know, and that's giving them a chance to save some money and put them in a better position to start out. So their so, budget's better. They are, yeah, they're, they're better prepared. I also think, don't you think this too, I'm hearing from buyers and stuff, they don't want to get into something where they have to go fix. Yes. Right, because it's not because they don't have the skill or the knowledge. They don't even know where to begin with that, right? So they've stayed home for a while. Mm-hmm. They haven't gone to rent maybe. They don't know what a clog sink or, you know, cause everything gets fixed. Right. Right. So I'm sure that probably gives them the relaxed feeling of, okay, I don't have to worry about the roof. I don't have to worry about, and there's a, you know, a small warranty that comes with it, you know, uh, covers some things. So I'm sure that's why the first home buyers feel comfortable with it. Um, absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, you're right because I think it's, um, you know, firsthand knowledge, you yeah. know, when you live in a home, you're right. going to start learning how to make repairs and, right. and, you know, do those sort of things. But again, you're hoping that these are not going to be big ticket items. So if, right. if it's just a matter of unclogging a sink. Right. Oh, know, right. No, no, no. A lot no. easier than having to replace the sewer pipe. You know. Right. So here's another thing. 
because I don't really know how to explain this sometimes to my um, clients. The biggest fear is I don't want this. I want this, right? So let's use an example. I don't want carpet. I want hardwood. Mm -hmm. Um, So an upgrade, right? So I I always think, oh my goodness, if we're going to do all these upgrades, it's going to cost a fortune. Is it? Is it crazy? So it depends. You know, you talked about, I, I, we'll back this up a little yeah. bit. So so a buyer comes to us and um, they're interested in building a house. Right. We're going to provide plans and we're going to provide specs. So the specs are basically a breakdown of what is included in the base price of the house. Right. You know, now we certainly have had buyers who have taken the specs and been happy with it. And that's the house that they've been, you know, had built. Right. And maybe they didn't even make any changes to the plans. Right. You know, I can't even imagine <laughs> if I'm going in there, You're I want to make, I, I make things personal. Right. I mean, the whole, I think one of the biggest perks to new constructions is being able to modify yeah. things. But if you're trying to stick within a budget, you know, and you don't want to make a change, then that number is set. You know exactly how much your house is going to cost. Mm-hmm. Now I can't say that does not speak for all builders because no, no. everyone does things differently. Right. You know, with with the builder that I work with, um, your your plumbing fixtures are included, your lights are included, you know, your your cabinets, your you know, hardwood floors, carpeting. Right. Some others might give you an allowance Got for it. all of those things. So you may find out, you know, from a selection that you right. may have selected something that's an upgrade. Um Appliance allowances are pretty standard. I see that across the board, you know, from builder to builder. And um, and again, that's just for your kitchen appliances. You're getting an allowance. You're going to go out and buy them and then, um, you know, be credited or get, a, you know, a check or right. however for that. But back to your question on the upgrades. Mm. The best way to handle it is to have that, you know, review of the specs. And if it says... Well, you're going to get carpeting in your bedrooms, right. but you really want hardwood, hardwood. throughout, mm. you know, then we price it out for you. Now, upgrades can be handled in a couple of different ways. Oh, that's right. So they can pay it so outside. They they're yep. So mm. one option is to, you know, put it right into the offer mm-hmm. so that it's included. It's something that maybe you're, you know, financing or yep. doing something like that. Or if you're deciding later on. Um, not too later, we got to get these materials at, you know, ordered, Mm -hmm. but, uh, but if you decide to do it later on, then we could do a change order Mm -hmm. so that you're paying cash for your upgrades. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but generally speaking, most people are trying to fit as much into that initial purchase price. And, and again, we had a lot when we were building our house, we Mm -hmm. had a laundry list of, of upgrades Mm. and modifications Mm. and things we were pricing out that we just got this list all priced out. We crossed off the things that just didn't fit with our budget. Yep. And then we made it work from the balance. So so it doesn't sound as scary. I mean, I know, it, you, like you said, builder to builder, it's going to make a difference. So you're just going to have to ask the questions up front, right? Mm-hmm. So let's just touch on the time frame. So now you decided on the plan. Now you picked out you got most of your upgrades or what you wanted. What do you normally see as a time period from the time you start to the time you end? So again, every builder is different, Different, right? You know, let's, and and I'm I'm glad you asked the question because sometimes I feel like there's a preconceived idea mm -hmm. of what the time frame is going to be. Mm -hmm. And I think because of that, it scares people. You know, you do hear stories of it taking six months, a right, year, right. you know, and plus. And it has. You know, right. And it, and it absolutely <laughs> it has. has. And there could be a number of reasons why. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the builder that I work with, yep. it takes about eight to 12 weeks to build a house. Now, that's that's the construction that, time frame. Right. You know, prior to the construction beginning, there is a lot of work. You know, we're going to be you know, ordering materials if he's going to be doing site work, you know, does he need to put in a septic system? Does he need to do all this other stuff? But once he starts building, that is pretty quick. And, and I'll tell you, we were very impressed when he was building our house. We were over there just about daily. Mm. And, um, and there were multiple crews working right. at all right. times. And he has just such a great 
system in mm -hmm. place, you know, mm -hmm. dedicated subs, mm -hmm. um, people that he's been working with, you know, for a long time and, and they, and they respect him. So they're, you know, they know to be available for his time frame. So I love how this all comes together. Makes, it makes me feel like a little bit more com comfortable talking with my clients. But now I have people that call me up all the time saying, I think I have a lot. Mm -hmm. I think I own property that could be subdivided, yes. right? So I know um, for me, I would be like, great. I think I'm going to... I think I might want to sell my house and I want to build on my lot. I want to build my dream home on my lot. Mm -hmm. So I think that we, we can talk a little bit about like, what do you do when you own a lot of land or even just another parcel that you think could be um, a lot? Mm -hmm. Like, how can that, how can we help them? Right. So let's talk back and forth of like some thoughts of how we can help them out. Okay. Because I think a lot of times I'm going to use an example I have a family, um, they own um, a house on a large piece of land and they want their kids to have a, uh, their house on it, right? Mm -hmm. So the kids say, I want to build the house. I need help. I need you to help me find a builder, X, Y, and Z. But the parents are like, we want to sell them that. Mm -hmm. So how do we go about, right? Um, there's two choices. There's two things here, right? So it's a, a seller selling some land mm -hmm. and then the buyer finding a builder. So there's right, two right, things going on here. Right. In the scenario that you described, yeah. you know, the it would be on the buyer to, you know, purchase the land right. and and take out a construction loan. So you that's know, a different way that, that we would were be talking. different than mm -hmm. yeah. Now the the builder that I work with has done that. Yep. You know, he's not opposed to, you know, doing he prefers to own the land. Yep. So we've also had buyers who contacted us and said, there's this lot that's for sale, you know, over on, you know, XYZ Street. Yeah. And, you know, we'd love it if, you know, if we could build a house there. And he's gone and bought the lot and built, you know, and built for them. Totally makes so, sense. And then that way it is just, you know, your conventional financing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's also a VA approved builder. Oh, so well, I, I want to add that there too. There we go. So, you know, those folks that are, are using um, VA financing, mm -hmm. but um, but in your what you're describing too, you know, there's a lot of people who are sitting on land out there that don't um, they maybe they don't want to pay the taxes on it anymore. Right. You know, other people are holding on to it because they don't want construction. They they want to to you know Privacy. hang on to that parcel. Mm -hmm. But those that you know maybe there's a hardship, something has come up, and they find themselves in a position that they need to sell the land. Yep. Um, you know, builders are always looking mm -hmm. for lots mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that you and I could help them find out whether or not the lot is buildable. Right. You know, I mean, there's so many different types of lots out there. Yeah. And I mean, we're not builders, right? Mm -hmm. There's no way we could come up with like walking the land and knowing all the ins and outs, yeah. but we can do the research. Yeah. Um, the preliminary yes, research. Yes, the preliminary work. Because yeah. it would give us a stepping stone to start out with. We could do um, looking on the websites of the town, contacting the town and finding out setbacks and um, their their zoning rules and right, whatnot. Right. We could start that preliminary and say, hmm, it appears that we have X, Y, and Z and start the process. That right? can feel like a needle in a oh. haystack. I'll tell oh you, my gosh. honestly, when you start looking at all oh. these, I wish that there was like some sort of consistency yeah. from town to, to town. town. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, but where you're finding this information mm -hmm. just varies. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of times I'm actually, you know, counting on, you know, my, I keep bringing up my builder, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, I, it's such a great relationship and I've yeah. learned so much from him, but, but oftentimes I'm asking him, Hey, you know, this, this is zoned, you know, R2, can you, can you build on this? And, and he'll take a drive by stuff for me. And, you know, he's done that quite a bit. Right. 
Um, but you know, what, what does R2 mean? You know, and, and I mean, and different lots are different things. We have residential, we have commercial, we have industrial, we have farming, agricultural. agricultural. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of even mixed, you know, use. Right. Right. Um, and then the lots themselves, you know, do they have wetlands? Do you need to go through conservation to get approval? Right. You know, and maybe they're not buildable. And, right. you know, one of the things he's, I often hear him say, oh, I think there's a lot of ledge over there, mm-hmm. you know, would require blasting. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. You know, and then, you know, is it conforming? Do you have enough frontage? Right. Um you know, and do you need a variance? Right. Is, you know, those sort of things. So there's and not that there's anything bad about any of that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just that the preliminary work that needs to be done um, can start out with us. Yes. We can go over there. Yeah. We can pull all the information. We can get on the sites. We can contact our inner circle of our builders and the people that can help us understand what we have here. Yes. We can bring all this information initially to the potential seller and then see from there how they want to go about whether selling it, dividing it, when they want to, how they want to. So they don't have to be like stuck with dumping a bunch of money. Just I'm going to divide the land. Right. Right. They, right. They, there's not there's nothing really to divide until you really know what you have to divide. Right. Right. You know, it's funny because I, I recently showed a property <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that um, that was on an acre of land. Yes. And I remember looking at it and saying, I think that might be a buildable lot right, right next to it. Right. You know, and I don't know whether or not it was. Right. Um, you know, but thinking for my buyer client mm-hmm. at the time, that's an opportunity right there. You could buy the house. Right. If you don't care about this parcel of land that could be subdivided from your lot, mm-hmm. you could then in turn have that money to either pay down your, you know, the principal on your mortgage or make repairs to your home. To the home. You know, right. I mean, there's, sometimes people are sitting on gold mines. Yeah. And, and um, financial for their own purpose, right? So Mm -hmm. that they can fix, like you were saying, Mm -hmm. maybe they want to add things or a a garage or they want to do something on their own own piece. Yes. They have this extra lot that they don't even know. Like I just built a garage on a, on a a piece of lot. I have two separate lots and I was like, you have an enormous, I have a a carriage house. (laughs) (laughs) It's not even a garage. I go, anybody want to move in? I got an upstairs done. I have garage envy. Your garage (laughs) is amazing. So, (laughs) right. So the, I think a lot of people that own lo- uh, larger pieces, so not, you know, a small piece, if there's the unknown, can I put something on it? I didn't know I could put on this humongous carriage house until we did the work. We started doing the work. We thought we could put a little, you know, garage on there and we're going to be good. Well, now we have a carriage house with extra stuff in it. And so... I think a lot of people, it could either help them, like you said, Mm -hmm. um, build off of their house, or maybe they have something and a builder is willing to buy, and maybe they have two lots, and maybe they have something more, or maybe a family member can build. Absolutely. So I think we could give them some preliminary information. Um, I, I mean, I just met somebody in a rural town, and they have quite a bit of land, and they were saying, you know, do we have something that can be? I have to say, you you do not need your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> my my wheels are spinning here. Okay, I have to say, my wheels I are spinning. Are I want somebody to call us right now. So I want somebody to call us right it. now, that's and I want to be yep. able to go over there and open up and just go through and start the work. I, I get so pumped about this because how many clients do we have that we know own maybe several acres? I know. I want to go over there and cut it all up. No. No, yeah. I don't want to, but I want to share that, right. you know, it's not just this one little piece. There might be something else and down the right. road, it's exciting. And it might not, you know, I mean, I have, I have a large parcel, but it's not, yeah. it's not buildable, you know, what, right. what's behind me. But, right. uh, but yeah, I just, I'm laughing because as the <laughs> queen of new construction, all these ideas are popping in my head. All these things that I would love to, you know, be able to share with people on what yeah. you can do with your home, how you can make these changes. And, um, and you just are, you know, popping out all these questions and I love it because, you know, this is, this is what, you know, what I wanted to hear because you're coming from the buyer perspective, you know, and I think that's super. 
you know, but well, I'm uh, trying to think about what everybody's going to ask for a question, right? Because, you know, you get these calls all the time. I see your sign on this yeah. piece of land. Yeah. Like, can I build on it? <laughs> you know, yeah. um, what can I build on it? Um, how do I do it? So I think people should feel comfortable to call us on those simple starting yeah. questions, right? It's all yeah. preliminary, yeah. right? It's, we don't know. We got to start somewhere. So you've got an idea. Great. Right. Let's go with it. Let's run with it. Right. Well, and that same thing, you know, I'll get questions from people, you know, um, do I get to do selections, yeah. you know, oh, on, right. on, on new construction, mm -hmm. you know? It's and like, you're like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> I love doing selections. When, when we sit in the office and you, you've been in there yeah. when I take over the conference yeah. room and I've actually joked around that I think every scratch on that conference room table came from me with a big thing of granite that I'm putting down, but people That's are picking you. out their, you know, their siding, their, um, their roof color, their, right. their the composite right, right, right. decking, it's cabinets, it's flooring. It's, it's everything. And it's, mm. so it's pretty exciting, I think. And then, then you start to get paranoid, you know, did I clash? You know, so now, <laughs> now they start asking me questions. You should see now just from the time that you need to bring me another buyer for new construction yes. because things have changed. I have created quite a bit mm. because I have a portfolio of professional photos that mm. I've gotten and I'm able to showcase what other people have done. So, you know, you can see how it matches and, you know, it, it's helpful. I think people think that they're only going to look at like a little piece of drawing, right? It's like a sketch and that's mm -hmm. all they have to make the decision on. But they don't realize how much more when you are working with someone that's been consistently working with a builder, mm -hmm. right? So even I call you up sometimes and say, hey, it, does this make sense? You know, like, you know, doing this. And I think I've called you a ton of times for help on um, searching on land pieces and yeah. stuff like that. So again, even though we are competitors or we, we run our own business, Yeah, there's a lot of collaboration that can help. Even if you're not vested right now, it gives right. you the information to get vested. Well, every time we have a, a meeting in our office, mm. a sales meeting, I, I'm always bringing up the new construction. Oh, of course you and, are. And now it becomes like a joke, you know, okay, Sherry. Why don't you just wear your hard hat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, or my, or my new construction sash <laughs> with my crown. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you're not the only person. I've had other people in the office contact me and say, I have a buyer who wants to put an offer on new construction when it's not yeah. my builder. Mm -hmm. you know, All right, I'll help you. You know, <laughs> of course we're gonna help. But them. Um, but again, you know, it's looking at it from a different perspective when you're on this side yeah. versus the other. I I definitely viewed new construction different before I started selling yeah. when I when I was helping buyers instead of the builder. Yeah. So I, I think that that helps. Um, I would love anyone just to give us a call if you have any questions about new construction or what is what can I do with my piece of land that I have yes uh, we would love your comment we would love to have a conversation with you I think we have a lot of information that we can share about this because it can be kind of tricky people think it's a real big challenge and it's overly expensive right yeah. but we could break it all down with you on your individual mm -hmm. plans ideas um thoughts so please put your comments down. I think it will be um, very helpful for you to see what we can come up with. And we, we'll, we'll answer everything we can with all of our resources. Yes. Great. That sounds great. All, all right. right. All right. Well, you can find us at Coldwell Banker in Lemonster, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank Thanks. you.